in the style of Jake E. Lee and that was A Bark at the Moon one of my favorite Aussie tracks and one of my favorite tracks that has Jake E. Lee on uh, guitars I found it the backing track from internet and yeah basically played the guitar on top of that the rhythm guitar that was behind the solo parts that was included in the backing track so I'm not really sure what gear Jake Ely used on that album but uh, I guess Marshall JCM 800 probably some 
overdrive and, and stuff and I guess his signature Charvel. Well, what I have here is a Tokai Strat. I uh, lower the middle pickup because it's on, on the way. Usually I don't play like heavy stuff with this, but uh, for this video I thought that uh, since JKB used kind of like Strat also, so I use this. Duncan passive pickups, can't remember what they are, kind of like low, medium output. And yeah, with the 800. Sounds like this, and I have now a little bit of stereo delay and reverb and tiny amount of pitch shifting. The exact same stuff I used on the song, because it was only one guitar, so that widens the sound a bit. And I when I listened to the album, there was kind of like something chorus pitch shifting going on, which was very common back in those days. Late, early 80s, early 90s. So yeah. Okay, and then the overdrive, what I have is a, a JHS Bonsai and OD1 from that. So that's not like a emulation or anything, that's the exact pedal, the exact parts. It has like TS-808, TS-9, lots of fantastic like Swiss army of overdrives. So OD1 and the picture somewhere, the tone control doesn't work on the on the OD. Like it doesn't, the original doesn't have, so it's like, so with the OD it's like... It cuts the lows and it's more, I guess a little bit more aggressive than the ST. If just briefly compared to ST, so this is OD1. I guess Jake Gilly used that. And then for the solo, I, I boosted that with the, with the EQ, like mid, mid boost and a little bit like volume boost. Like that. And for the solo, as you probably saw from the screen, I used a uh, stereo flanger which I added afterwards to the to the track. It's a you know, plug-in. Worked pretty okay. But okay, so how to play the song? This is classic like Jake E. Lee style. The riffing, the solo, everything. It's an it's amazing song. So it starts like this kind of pedal point lick. So the the tuning on the album is E standard, I'm now in E flat. So it's like... So it's basically G. And then like this. Cool. And then comes this. Like, you can play it like... But, I actually, I have played it like this. But, I found it a video from a YouTube where Jake E. Lee shows how he plays it. So, he plays it like this. So it's basically like F, but only the like inversion, and then and it's kind of like F slash B or B slash F, and then G, and you keep the F major here. Cool, and then he switches back and forth. The other version is like. Like this. So slowly the both versions. And then 
and the other one when the vocals kicks in. Like that. Really cool riff. So once again, and the other is like this. Okay? Then comes the <coughs> pre chorus just like F sharp bass, like pedal point, kinda. So first it's F sharp minor. Then comes D slash F sharp. And you can play it like this. I play it like this. You know, classic. I get the same old way. Yeah. So. And then E. It's wide chord, but okay. The F, F still there, the F sharp. And then, kind of like, you know, F sharp minor, lick. And then, second time, and then it's the low E, so it kind of relieves that whole thing. And then it's the main riff again. Then the chorus, it's like... So it's like C to D, but only this. This is like G major. Octaves from C to D to B. And from G major to F major. And then E, like this. And then the second time is... Kind of like John Sykes, you know, thing. Then the C part is a couple of guitars. I think one is just doing like... Like this, but the kind of main guitar is doing something like this. So... Just some G major, like, arpeggio things. I guess it's something similar, I just played like... And then comes like... Something like that. And then the ending is... So F, E, D, C, B, 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 B flat, <laughs> and then it's like, kind of like, sus, whatever. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and then the solo, it goes to D. So, basically, what he uses is D minor scale, aka Aeolian mode. I played the solo quite similarly, I mean, probably not note for note correct, but, you know, in that, you know, kind of close enough. <laughs> so, it starts with the... Like this. Then comes something like... Like this classic. And then like... Something like in, in, you know, D minor. Like this. And then, kind of basic pentatonic. And some double stops. And then comes this, this part that, that uh, it's actually quite hard and interesting because it goes like in fours. It's like six times four, like one, two, three, one, two, three, four, 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 one. At least that's how I think about it. So I mean I've seen tablatures like Which is absolutely correct, exactly same notes what I played, but it was a lot of string skipping, so I find that a bit difficult, because, you know, why make things hard if you can make them easier? So, I'll play it like this. So it always, you know, pinky does the moving to the next kind of box. This is really good picking exercise also. And then basically the same idea, again D minor natural scale, so... Here. And then you could play this here. But then you would end up here and then you'll be in a rush to do the last triad thing. So that's why I start here on the D, like... And then comes the... 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, so... And then the guitar starts to ring, but on the version I did, and you know, playing live, you obviously you need to rush to the riff. So I, I played played something like. A something like that. So the whole thing again slowly. This is very good a picking exercise for your pinky and. You know, you can do like, I think, I'm not sure if Jake Lee picks everything, but you can kind of do it like... Like, slide and not picking, but slightly palm muting, so it kind of sounds like you're picking. I think I did a couple of occasions on the song like this. I didn't really pay attention to what I did, but...
This is hard for me because I usually, when I do this, my hand is like this, but Strat, it's like, wow, do I keep my hand so. Uh, how did I play it on this, on this song? Yeah, it's, it's, I should probably modify this too, because tone is anyway, always usually on full, but that's how the solo goes. Then it's again the main riff, uh, pre-chorus, and there, there's a small difference in, on the last pre-chorus, this one. It goes like this on the two previous ones, but the last goes. Like this. I'm not actually sure if I played it like this on the song. <laughs> okay, and then chorus or the that's the same except the last. Instead of goes like this. And then the outro melody. Uh, Jakey Lee show, showed that he plays it like this. I'm like, why again make things harder? I mean, you could play this, but then this note would be on the wooded string, so it sounds a little bit different, but you can play this with plain strings only, like. It's a lot easier. And then what's in the middle there, so it's like... Like that. So... with A. So, that's how you play a Bark at the Moon. And I chose another song that I'm gonna cover on this one, <clears throat> which is also really good and one of my all-time fa favorites from Ozzy and in general. It's uh, Shut in the Dark. So, let's watch that now and then I'll show how to play it.
All right, that was shot in the dark from the ultimate scene. As you heard, a few hiccups, but the vibe was good, so it's okay. <laughs> uh, the tuning of this song originally is quite interesting. I mean, it's in E flat, but the low E string and the low A string are tuned one step up. Because the song is in, in B minor, when you tune the A string up one whole step, it becomes B, so it's really easy to then play it. But like you probably saw, I didn't use that tuning because, you know, uh, we had a Ozzy Osbourne tri tribute band called Crazy Train back in the days in Finland. You know, we played sold out shows at Tavastia Club and everything. My good friend, bless him, Alexi, was also, you know, occasionally playing with us because, you know, he's a big Ozzy fan. Was well, like, like me. So uh, I always just, I learned to play this like uh, in a standard tuning. And I found out, because now when I really listen to what J.K. Lee plays, I, I had played this back in the day quite a bit like Zach Wilde. But now I tried to play as close what J.K. Lee played on the album. Let me show you how you play this in standard E flat tuning. So it's, you know, B minor is the key. So it's basically like. So B minor and A and then. And then this part, I mean, you could play this like without including the B, but you can play. And then the, before it goes to, so the, the whole thing goes like. And when it goes to the worst, there's this, you know, one whole step bend from E to F sharp. And then, well, I used the 800. And then I have this G-Lab switcher, which I can program to do many things. So on one button, I program it that it changes to triple super leads, clean channel and includes chorus. So. This is basically like, it's not minor, it's this like sus two. And then you lift your pinky, so you play the B. And then it's this kind of G. G. And it's basically like G major, but at least I fret it like this. I mean, obviously, ob obviously you could do it like this. But then it becomes tricky because there's this, so. So there's this C. Nice sounding chord. And then it comes again. And then comes the Pre-chorus, again, in this tuning, you could play it like, like, just But 
but the way I played on, on the, I played like. So I included the B, which in the different tuning you would just have to, you know, palm you the A string because it's tuned one step up, but. You have to do a little bit more work. Okay, and then the chorus. Again, you don't necessarily have to take the B because the bass is doing that, so you'll play just. Then. E, D, B, B, C, B, and then. It's basically like an octave higher. Okay, then comes the main riff and there's some kind of... Some kind of lick in, in uh, B minor. Well, actually, he's actually using the... Kind of like F sharp Phrygian box, which in B minor is B minor. A little bit theory. Uh, and then, yeah, verse, pre chorus, chorus. And then there's a, uh, you know, this which I F'd up <laughs> on the second time. <laughs> I played something. Huh? And then. And then comes this. But again, you necessarily don't have to take the B because the bass is doing that, so you can just play it. Kind of like. Makuba! And uh, yeah, that was my wife. Wanted something, but I said that I'm filming. <laughs> okay, and then uh, comes the part before the solo, which I think it's played with the slide. I just played it like mimicking slide, like. It's played like from C to D, but playing like, you know, triads, like inversions. Like that, and then the solo, which uh, goes to D, and it's uh, sorry, continues in B, wrong song. <laughs> so it's basically what a uh, Jake uses is B natural minor, aka Aeolian mode. So I had the old EQ and just give it a little bit more gain boost, but now let's I won't use it so. It starts with, you know... Kind of basic, this... I mean, I do this kind of flicks all the time. You know, the flat fifth there, you know, from blue scale. Devil's note. Then comes this, uh, like... It's again, same scale, but... At least that's the way I play it. Mm 
And then again, B minor scale. It's like this do 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 Kind of strange rhythm, like. Then kind of this tremolo peak, peak thing. Cool. And then it's the pre-chorus and chorus and well, at the end I got a little carried away and played a solo. I guess that's what usually, or it is what usually Ozzy has played in the end, no matter the guitar player, you know, Jake, Zach, Gus, uh, Joe Holmes, you know, there's this improvised solo in B minor, but on, on the album there's this really strange, like, this chromatic kind of like... Something like, to me, doesn't sound very good, like... There, at the end, it's, well, interesting, so to say. But, yeah, hey, Hopefully this in the style of uh, Jay Keeley was informative and, and stuff, so, I mean, Jay Keeley is probably, well, if you could say, the least favorite of Aussie players, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of, of, of Randy and, and Zach, but, but Jay Keeley definitely has, has some great stuff, especially his band he founded after Ozzy, called Badlands. They did like two albums, the first is good, but the second, Voodoo Highway, is awesome. That is my, like one of my all-time favorite albums, and on that album I really like, actually I like more Jake E. Lee's playing than what I, what he, what I like, what he did with Ozzy. And that's like kind of like you know southern rock metal, kind of like Pride and Glory almost, Zach Wilde's band. But the album unfortunately isn't available. Well, you can Google why the lead vocalist was. Well, he was what he was. So, but it's on YouTube. I, I put a link, and and uh, I will probably do in the style of J.K. E. Lee part two and a focus on that amazing album, Badlands, Voodoo Highway. Hey, links in the description below if you like, thumbs up, subscribe, you know the drill. Thanks for watching, until next time, take care, bye.